Well, there is not a proposed restructure of the government's civil service HR department. That was not on the cards and not the issue that we have seen highlighted by the, uh, by the GGCA. There is a proposal by people in the HR department of, of the civil service to look at the structure that they have, but that is a purely a civil service exercise, and we're looking at that with all departments in the civil service, but not to create a new uh, human resources department, not just for the civil service, but also for the agencies, authorities and companies, which would uh, in some way affect the civil service department. What we are looking at, and this is a very positive development, that all unions and I hope everyone in the authorities, agencies and companies of the government will embrace entirely, is the creation of a non-civil service department to deal with the human resources needs of all those authorities, agencies and departments, so that you understand some of them have small human resources capability. Most of them rely on calling the civil service department and asking them how does the civil service deal with this or that particular issue. What we want to do is to give a generic human resources capability to the authorities, agencies and companies which will be able to take care of the human resources issues which arise there. Remember that the authorities, agencies and companies are now much bigger than the civil service. The civil service is properly provided for in its human resources department. There may be some need for tinkering there as times change, so needs change. That is not the proposed restructure that is under the microscope or which the GGCA sent its bulletin about. They seem to have confused the idea that somehow those two proposals were going to merge simply because we were asking that the civil service department work with the new department that is going to be created. I call it department the new, the new capability that is going to be created and that they exchange ideas and work together on the development of this new uh, department or, or provision for the authorities, agencies and companies. It's a very good thing because people who work in the agencies, authorities and companies today don't necessarily have the protection of systems for discipline, systems for understanding sick leave, all the systems that are in place in the civil service. And so what we want to do is to bring those standards across to apply to people who today may be floundering in order to understand what happens if I'm going to be disciplined, what happens if I have to go outside my usual sick leave entitlement, who do I speak to? And so we're bringing up the standard for the workers who are the employees of the government in those agencies, authorities and companies. And we're talking about, for anybody who's unclear, we're talking about the likes of the police force, the GHA, other large organisations? Not the police force, the, because police officers are civil servants, so they are remotely dealt with in, in the police in terms of discipline, etc. There's a very detailed code there. But we're talking about the GHA, we're talking about the care agency, we're talking about the Borders and Coast Guard agency, we're talking about all the agencies that exist, all the authorities, the Gibraltar Sports and Leisure Authority, etc. You name them. The Health Authority, for example, has a very developed and working uh, human resources department. It's, it's probably the largest of our authorities. It's one that's been going for the longest. So it's the one that needs less attention and probably the last one that we need to be concerning ourselves with. But there are others, for example, the Borders and Coast Guards Agency, the, the Care Agency, which have scant resource in managing all of their human resources needs. If you pull all of those resources together and you create one department, you are then able to establish coherent policies across the board, you're able to establish coherent practices and procedures across the board, borrowing in the main from the uh, established practices and procedures and policies which have worked very well in the civil service and which have been modernized, although you've still got very old general orders, the service has been modernizing itself, is looking with the unions already very proactively at a more modern code for civil servants. And that's going to be very similar to the code that we look at for the purposes of the agencies, authorities and companies. And for somebody who has only up until this point heard the GGCA's version of events on this, they might think that you've changed your position. Well, if, if you believe that what the GGCA put was exactly what the government's position was. But look, I've been in meetings with the GGCA where I've explained this in exactly the same terms. It would appear from the follow-up meetings I've had from the GGCA, they simply misunderstood the fact that I was saying that these two were going to work in an integrated fashion to develop the new capability, that they thought that the new capability and the old capability were going to become one. That was never our intention. Because we also believe that the Civil Service Department stands on its own and that the new 
capability stands on its own because the employment terms and conditions of the agencies, authorities and companies are different to the terms and conditions of the civil service, although they're starting to become similar. So what we've always intended to do was to have those two in a separate uh, structure. We want them to work together. We don't want them to work with their backs to each other. You know, Everybody here is working to the same crown, receiving remuneration to the same crown, and at the end of the day, working to the same and for the satisfaction of the same customer. And that's not me. That's not the government. That's not the chief minister. That's you, the taxpayer. And in delivering to the taxpayer, what we want to do is to ensure that the policies that we apply to the people that the Crown employs for that purpose are as uniform as possible. Now, if I was in that way, seeking to reduce the guarantees that employees have, somehow give you less terms uh, or, or less favorable terms and conditions of employment, rightly the unions would be on my back. But this is quite the opposite. We are creating protections through policies and procedures for people who at the moment have none. And is it the government's intention to install Michael Crome uh, at the head of that capability? Not at all. And this is one of the things I've been very clear about from the beginning with the GGCA. Michael Crome is my industrial relations advisor, as well as being my MOD advisor. And already we've saved millions of pounds by him being on board with the government of Gibraltar and helping us to understand how our relationship with the MOD needs to be recalibrated in some of the things that the MOD charges for. So uh, that's a resource that has been hugely positive to the Gibraltarian taxpayer. What I'm asking Michael to do, and the GGCA will be the first to understand that he's a person who gets things done, is to establish this new uh, capability, but not to go, because I need him with me to deal with industrial relations issues and MOD issues. Once it is established, then the posts that there may be there will be open for competition at the top or throughout. And it's very likely we're just simply going to amalgamate a lot of the people who do human resources in some of the authorities, agencies, and companies into one properly structured environment and in that case you know there'll be people who've been doing human resources for some time who will want to opt for the top job but what Michael is doing is helping me to establish the structure and in doing so is leading with me on the subject I'm doing it in the ministerial way he's doing it as an official once it's established the top posts and it, it'll be more than one because there'll be a head of it and then there'll be deputies etc will be open for competition in the amalgam of people who will form part of it, i.e. everyone who is part of the authorities, agencies and companies who is qualified for those posts. There's no question whatsoever my having appointed anyone to that post, Michael Crome or otherwise.